Hey, good morning, good afternoon, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's do some notes today, and uh, we'll pick this up after the break. Pretty sure next week we're going to do probability, but we're going to start uh, diving into algebra. We're going to solve systems. Okay, and why do we solve systems? Uh, gives us another way of uh, solving two variable equations. Okay, it gives us one way of solving two variable equations. And this has applications for engineering and as always we're making rational arguments. That's what math is all about. Just making rational arguments and having dignity and presenting those things. So uh, we'll dive into more of that later. But this is really now we're really getting into algebra. Okay, so we're going to solve some systems here so we can have two unknowns and figure out what both those unknowns are. Uh, so the first method we're going to use is, is graphically. So you can solve these graphically. And this is a nice, uh, nice way to do it. Granted, we're given nice, simple numbers now, as you know, uh, the reality of things is that oftentimes we do not get nice symbol numbers, uh, and so that makes it a little bit harder. But we also have tools as we progress that can help us with those not so simple numbers, and uh, you guys will get into that throughout your high school career. So just very simply graph, and I like to graph these uh, with discrete points, which are just dots. Okay. Because uh, then I can really see what the solution is. So I'm going to graph this guy minus 5 and then minus 2 x is down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, and then up 2 and back 1, up 2 and back 1. I'm just going to leave that, leave that alone for now. Okay. Then I'm going to graph this guy as well, 2x plus 3, so go plus 3. All right, and then I'm going to use problem solving strategy to use my head. I could go up 3 and over 1, um, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to intersect. The solution is the intersection. Probably should have told you that in the beginning. <laughs> Sometimes I just assume you guys know some of this stuff. Uh, so if we're going this way, we go down three, one, two, three, and back one. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, and back one. I'm sorry, down two and back one. Whoa, my bad. One, two, and back one. One, two, and back one. There we go. There's the spot. Okay, now... I just modeled a little uh, failure, a little uh, difficulty, which is a good thing because we all have that as we progress. Uh, so how, how do we know? Well, it looks like they hit right there, and I, after I revisited what I did, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So let's take a look. To me, that looks like the point minus 2 comma minus 1. All right, well, how do I know for sure? Yeah, I can check it. I can check it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point, x and y, and I'm going to plug it into each one of these equations. All right, and it should be true for each one. Then the whole thing's true. So let's plug it into this equation. y equals negative 2x minus 5. Now y is negative 1 equals negative 2 times negative 2 minus 5, minus 1 is 4, minus 5. I'm going to stop right there. I should be able to tell that that is true. All right. Same thing with this guy. Let's plug it in for that. Uh, y equals 2x plus 3. Throw the minus 1 in for y. I get 2 times negative 2 plus 3 
minus 1 is minus 4 plus 3. Again, I should be able to see that, that that is true. Okay, so there you go. There's my check. Smiley face is all good. It works. All right, so congratulations. You just solved a uh, system of equations uh, graphically. Okay, and there's other methods we'll get to as well. All right. Let's move on to number three. If at any time during this video uh, it gets going too fast and you need to pause and hold it, then uh, just please let Mrs. Kier know and she, and she can uh, she can do that. Down here, numero trace. Just take a general look at this and I can I can start graphing this and I, I'd probably be tempted to plus 3 and then up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 it's the same same equation I had here uh, in in 2 uh, I'm gonna stop there I don't want to get too far off because I'd like to be uh, efficient I'd like to do as little math as possible here uh, to get on to other things so let's solve this guy for y okay let's solve this guy for y and then we'll kinda have a better idea of where they may intersect if at all so I'm gonna go minus 8x so now I've got minus, remember, don't forget to grab that sign, minus 4y is minus 8x minus 12 divided by minus 4 y is 2x plus Three. Oh, row, 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 raggy. Uh, they're the same line. What or what shall we do with that? All right. Here is a rhetorical question. How many times do they intersect? And I would argue that they intersect an infinite amount. They touch at every point that they share. Okay, so that would be all reals. Okay, and this is a good time to revisit some stuff we've done in the past. If I set these two things equal to each other, because I can take this, oh, this is good, this is gonna preview where we're going in the future. I can take that, this is equal to y, right? So I can take this and plug it in for y, right? Um, so now I've got 2x plus three is 2x plus three, and then we've solved these uh, in the past, just subtract 2x, subtract 2x, and you get 3 equals 3. You probably can't see that, so I'll bump it down. And then, uh, remember if we get a true statement, it's all reals. And that matches what we have here. So, uh, a nice thing about math and rational arguments is uh, that you can check them, and they're true. So uh, it's nice to be able to uh, solve things with a couple of, of different methods. It validates your results. You know, it, it lets you know that you're closer to the truth than, you know, as I like to say from time to time, even a blind squirrel finds a nut from once in a while. So uh, it kind of lets you know that you are, uh, you're seeing what you're doing. All right, good times. I can feel how much you guys are loving this. So let's uh, slide over to four. All right, so maybe I've learned something from the last problem. Maybe I'm like, well, you know, I really didn't have to graph it. I could have just seen that they're the same, and then I, I, I know they're all real because it's true. So let's do the algebra first here. Why not? Could be wrong. Doesn't matter. That's all part of the problem solving process. So I subtract x. We got minus 2y is negative x plus 4. I'm going to divide by minus 2. Uh, 
y, those are going to cancel out, and I'll get 1 half x minus 2. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, I look at these two, and what do I notice? Bells should start going off. They look kind of similar, not totally similar. If I look at it, they have the roots. Same, same slope. All right, well, what, it, what does that mean? Double rainbow, what does that mean? Uh, so if they have the same slope, I look here, you know, those are right on top of each other and I kind of, you know, work backwards, use my head. I think that means they're parallel. All right, I'm pretty sure that's, that's parallel, but I'm real visual. I like to see pictures. I like drawings. All right. Um, yeah, I w I'll save you the tangent about my father's making me buy a uh, Michigan State hat for my mother because he's incapable of getting on the internet. I shouldn't say incapable. He just refuses to. And uh, so he's trying to describe it to me with words, and that's just hard uh, because he's, he struggles sending pictures uh, on his on his phone so good times but uh visual helps um so let's graph this sucker go up to two i'm graphing this one first up one over two i'll do a couple of them it's pretty easy okay so then i'll punt and uh, i'll do this one in blue so you can see the difference not to get confused so start at minus two up one over two, up one over two. All right, and I might even draw a line because that, to me, that looks like it looks like my thoughts are being validated by a picture. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's parallel. So I'm pretty sure that those are never never going to intersect. Okay, so parallel, they do not intersect. Uh, so I'm guessing, because the solution is the intersection up here, I'm guessing that that means that there's no solution. Uh, but let's use some algebra to justify this, and again, this will be a good tie-in because another method to solve these is called substitution. So uh, this is y, and this is y. So I can take this and plug it in to y right here. Okay, so those two things are y. So if uh, you know two different things represent twenty dollars you can trade twenty dollars for those things or those things for twenty dollars that's kind of what we're doing so fire it in right here I'll rewrite it down here one half x minus two is one half x plus two subtract one half x cancels gone 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 minus two is two huh what? No. False. So, you know, that tells me that's what I have here. And again, the y is, uh, comes back to the rational argument part. You just made a beautiful rational argument. I suppose you could argue with this. Uh, it would really push the constraints of rational or intelligent thought if you did, right? 